Здравейте всички, добре дошли на нашия семинар, за, свързан с проекта за кописти и скриптори в южносовянски кописти и скриптори в 14 век. Много се радвам днес да и, и за нас е голяма чест да е с нас доктор Паула Манони, директор на отделение на Ватиканска апостолическа библиотека за дигитализация. Мисля, че опит на Ватиканската библиотека е наистина уникален. Вече от повече от 15 години се занимават с дигитализация на хиляда и хиляда ръкописи, от които няколко са славянски, ама проблематики на дигитализация са общи за всички ръкописи. За това съм много, много се радвам да приветствам присъствие с нас на доктор Манони и дам дума на Марта, за да води днешния семинар. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Today uh, I'm trying to, to do this in English, so I will try to repeat a little bit what Marco says in Bulgarian. <laughs> and so, first of all, thank you, everyone, for joining us to our uh, online meeting of this winter session. Actually, it's the second one that we uh, organized. Today, our speaker will be Paola Manoni, the head of the coordination uh, of the IT services of the Biblioteca Apostolica Vaticana, the Vatican Library. <laughs> and she represents the Vatican Library in a many international uh, initiatives. There is no time actually right now to just uh, enlist all of them. But uh, the most important one, maybe just because today uh, she's going to talk about this uh, AAAF design ecosystem, she is like, she represents the uh, AAAF consortium and she's like the core chairing the AAAF design working group. So now it's time to give the floor to, <laughs> to Mr. Um, Manoni right away. So let's start. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. I'm delighted <laughs> to be with you this afternoon. Thank you to the Research Center for having invited me. Uh, for a presentation uh, focuses on uh, a new technique, uh, we may say, the triple IF uh, interoperability framework and its impact uh, on the discoverability of contents of the digital libraries uh, through the use case of the digital manuscripts uh, collection of the Vatican Library. I would like to introduce this topic with a preliminary consideration inspired by some thoughts of the great art historian Bernard Berenson. In 1953, in a preface to a catalog of a great exhibition of medieval and Renaissance Italian manuscripts at the Modern Library, he wrote, I am quoting him, illuminated manuscripts are not easily accessible to the public and for good reason. Sorry, I, okay. And for good reason, most of them are still in codices and can be shown only at two page at a time. There is no other way unless the leaves are extracted and exhibited separately. This is not recommendable and it takes away from their character as book illustration and besides makes them liable either to lose or change color or to fade away from permanent exposure to light. Moreover, many of them are too fragile, indeed so fragile, that most keepers of illuminated manuscripts would, would prefer to keep them like horrors in a harem. Not infrequently, they bar access to their treasures by extracting from the common art lover a written declaration of where and when he means to publish the manuscript he wishes simply to look at. The only compromise is to show them as best as one can 
under glass and only for a short time. Of course, technology has changed all these in ways that Berenson could not have foreseen. Digital imaging now allows from remote display of entire books with a clarity that revolts or even surpasses the experience which a viewer could have in situ. Many libraries now offer digital access to selected items from their collection so that they can be seen outside the boundaries of the manuscript reading room. Finally, the world has access to these long sequestered treasures, not only the spectacular illuminations, but also the many more ordinary handwritten texts. But Berenson goes on to make one further point. He notes that students of manuscripts live in a world apart and have developed a vocabulary, a phraseology, a nom and nomenclature, a mode of reference by number which outsiders cannot easily follow. Since permission to view manuscripts has always been subject to severe restrictions, only specialists really had access and knew what to do when access was given. It required a knowledge of cataloging and classification that were very specific to particular libraries and collection and collecting traditions. Even today, digital delivery of manuscript material is organized by these uh, somewhat arcane cataloging codes that serve to identify a particular page, leaf, or whole bound book. But manuscripts at the time of their production were set in a larger context that we could call preprint culture. They were the vehicle by which human knowledge was transmitted from generation to generation. This has been written about, but to see how it was manifest in the production of manuscript volumes has been difficult due to the barriers that mentioned, Berenson mentioned. If technology can deliver copies of individual manuscripts, can technology then assemble these images in a way that provide for the scholarly public a window into this preprint world? That's a question, a good question. I think that the IIIF, again, the International Image Interoperability Framework, answers this question perfectly. Let me introduce the general concept of IIIF. Since repositories of digital images have been available online, institutions have made a lot of assumptions about how people use images on the web. You can infer this by the way in which images are represented to you, each institution or site as its own image viewer assumes rather passive viewing in of images, assumes you only want to look at one image at a time. The technical implication of such image delivery also has serious consequences. Zero data. Sorry. Systems often don't play well together. Different backends Often the data is tied to the platform and what happens to the data when the platform must update or change? IIIF came about a solution to the problem experienced by researchers and tech departments across the world. The idea came from thinking past what was currently possible on the web with digital images to what could and should be possible. What do users need? Ability to contextualize images from across collections and institutions. Actively engage with images, deep zoom, pen, annotate. 
combine images from across the world in one space, be free to use the image viewer of choice, cite and share work, confidence in stable image URLs. But uh, what do institutions need? Perhaps make images highly available and open, but in a standardized, accessible way, ability to load, transfer large high resolution images easily without server overwork. Not only view openness and access, but data persistence and longevity. Again, system flexibility, publish once, reuse often. Access to image-based resources is fundamental to research, scholarship, and the transmission of cultural knowledge. Digital images are a container for much of the information content in the web-based delivery of images, book, newspapers, manuscripts, maps, scrolls, symbol sheet collections, and archival materials. Yet, much of the internet's image-based resources are locked up in silos with access restricted to be bespoke locally built applications. A growing community of the world leading research libraries and image repositories have embarked on an effort to collaboratively produce an interoperable technology and community framework for image delivery. The IIIF has the following goal. The goals are to give scholars an unprecedented level of uniform and rich access to image-based resources hosted around the world, to define a set of common application programming interfaces that support interoperability between image repositories, to develop, cultivate, and document shared technologies such as servers and web clients that provide a world-class user experience in viewing, comparing, manipulating, and annotating images. The last one is a very important concept that we will focus later. It is most helpful to define what IIIF is by first defining what it is not. IIIF is not a database web client, repository, or service. It is not a specific website that you log into or access, nor is it an ecosystem of tools. Rather, IIIF is a set of standards and guidelines aimed at providing worldwide uniform access to image-based resources with the goal of enhancing the research of digital images. IIIF is not the end result of a process, but rather the instructions that can enable libraries to create new ways to use their digital special collections. The IIIF is a set of application programming interfaces. Let me mention here the two main APIs. The image API provides for a standardized way to request and deliver images. This standardization allows both browser and server application to reuse software and provide a consistent experience for requesting images. Here is an example of requesting an image with the image API. The IIIF Image API specifies a web service that returns an image in response to a standard HTTP or HTTPS request. The URI can specify the region, the size, the rotation, the quality characteristic and format of the requested image. A URI can also be constructed to request basic technical information about the image to support client application. 
this API was conceived to facilitate semantic reuse of image resources in digital image repositories maintained by cultural heritage organizations. It could be adopted by any image repository and service and can be used to retrieve static images in response to a properly constructed URI. The objective of the IIIF presentation, the second uh, mandatory API, is to provide the information necessary to allow a rich online viewing environment for primarily image-based objects to be presented to a human user, likely in conjunction with the IIIF image API. In other words, the IIIF presentation API gives up a specification for presenting digital objects and the data describing them. Is it not my intention to enter into other technical details or to entirely mention the set of the APIs identified so far by the IIIF standard? I would like to relate the two most established IIIF APIs, the image and the presentation API, to the previous concept of a window into a preprint world. I would like to open this window by means of a tool capable of interpreting the IIIF APIs. The popular Mirador software, whose characteristics play an important role in the discoverability of the IIIF as its core of capabilities. So Mirador is an extensible and easy to integrate image viewer, which enables image annotation and comparison of images from repository dispersed around the world. Mirador has been optimized to display resources from repositories that support the International Image Interoperability Framework APIs. It provides a tiny window environment for comparing. Not for comparing what? For comparing different image resources, such as manuscripts or other kinds of resources. So, in a nutshell, multiple image-based resources synchronize structural and visual navigation of content using OpenSea Dragon, open annotation, compliant annotation creation, and viewing on deep zoomable canvases, metadata display, book reading, bookmarking, and more. Mirador is developed as an active open source project that regularly receives contribution from software developers around the world. Several large projects sponsored by peer cultural heritage institutions regularly meet and coordinate the development of new features and releases that benefit not only their individual projects and institutions, but also the community more broadly. Mirador is a powerful window offering a view into the world's more substantial digital collection on international scale. And I would like to tell you about its implementation at the Vatican Library. The scope of the ongoing digitization project at the Vatican Library is twofold. It renders the manuscripts accessible online to everyone at no cost and it preserves the original manuscripts in their best condition for future generation by reducing the necessity for on-site consultation. The implementation of the web platform on the digital library is available at the address digibuckly.it. This service is openly accessible and interoperable according to the IIIF image presentation APIs. Given scholarly needs and the opportunities presented by the IIIF 
And given the growing number of repositories interested in IIIF, the library has considered the result achieved as the basis to participate in the evolution towards more advanced tools suitable to offer scholars new perspectives into the world of medieval manuscripts using IIIF technologies. So the Vatican Library in conjunction with Stanford University Libraries has carried a great uh, three-year project funded by the Andrew Mallon Foundation. The project aimed to demonstrate among the advantages of the IIIF for manuscripts, how the annotation level is a fundamental innovation for the study of contents. Transcriptions, comments, comparative analysis of texts and images. Thanks to the funds received, the library has implemented a workflow to enrich the digital delivery of these materials by annotating some exemplary manuscripts using Mirador with scholarly analysis in order to tell scholarly narratives that provide interpretation for the individual works and illustrate important aspects of the world of the preprint culture as we have defined so far. The library intends, intended to, to engage the visitor to its website on the possibility of using these annotated manuscripts in IIIF according to specific thematic pathways by providing tools for discovering and comparing digital materials. The deep analysis of contents of manuscripts entails the understanding of the preprint world in which the manuscript is born. This implies a knowledge pertaining to the history of the manuscript, its origin, provenance, as well as other circumstances of the production of the manuscript, identification of dates, scribes, artists, discussions about the intellectual content and the scripted discussion on paleographic matters. In its essential lines, a thematic pathways is composed by three different kinds of information, a general description, introduction, historical information of the chosen theme, it represents in itself the story. Descriptive and structural metadata and curatorial narratives for each manuscript, as well as annotations, comments, in-depth analysis about the detailed parts of a manuscript, for example, text, comments, illuminations, and etc., and transcriptions of units of information. The first four thematic pathways examined in the three-year research is available at the URL uh, here in this uh, slide since October 2019. I would like to introduce you to the four thematic pathways. The first one is about courses in paleography Greek and Latin from antiquity to the Renaissance, the Renaissance. The rich collection of manuscripts preserved in the library makes it possible to follow the evolution of the Greek and Latin script all the way from antiquity to the Renaissance. A careful selection of images of manuscripts accompanied by transcriptions and comments could be very useful as teaching material for a course in Greek or Latin paleography. The availability of online images of manuscripts together with the possibility offered by the IIIF APIs allows to a complete transformation of teaching practice in this field. The explanatory, explanatory materials I mean, the story which frames this unit can be thought as a sort of textbook. For each of the sections, the Greek and the Latin one, of this thematic path, a set of complete digitized manuscripts 
chosen from to illustrate the phases in the development of the script for the fourth to the 16th century is provided. From each manuscript, the chosen pages with the paleographical and codicological description and the di diplomatic transcriptions is also made available. So as you can see in this slide, uh, you, uh, you can uh, see uh, what I mean with an annotation. An annotation in, in the context of uh, the API able to um, uh, provide uh, to the end users, to the scholars, uh, at the same time, uh, the table of contents, as you can see, on the left side of the screen, as well as uh, an insight of the meaning, or as well as uh, an explanation of, in that case, uh, letters uh, um, uh, demonstrating, for example, a script such as the Carolina script. And uh, the great effort is that uh, this can be uh, open to other viewers for the, the comparison of, for example, this leaf to other leaves, for example, um, uh, hold it in another library by using the same technique for uh, uh, viewing digital, ob digital object. This is the revolution of this uh, new technique. But uh, let's go back. Uh, uh, to our uh, storytelling, uh, demonstrating on, on the one hand the use of the IIIF, on the other hand, how we can tell stories with this new digital approach. So let me focus again on uh, the second uh, thematic pathway, which is about the evolution and the transmission of texts of specific works, uh, the Latin classics. The Vatican Library, as you probably know, owns one of the most important collections of manuscripts with texts by classical Latin authors, many of them richly illustrated. The aim of these pathways is to describe 81 manuscripts directly from the original codices, metadata and annotations pertaining to the study of text and illuminations have been provided. The work throws light not only on the illustration of the text, but especially on the relationship between text, illuminations, comment, and the gloss. The importance of these projects lies in the remarkable variety of gems of the classical world, from epic, lyric, and elegies to dramatic, philosophical, historic, and declamatory. The project deals with this variety of gems by analyzing a group of 81 manuscripts. This group has never been analyzed and described systematically. Each manuscript has been selected in order to deconstruct the figurative imagery of the classics from papyrus style, the illumination are set within a text column, two historiated initials. In addition, these selected manuscripts present particularly interesting textual and historical characteristics because the classical authors continue, even today, to provide paradigmatic images and concepts. Classical authors, in fact, have always received a special attention due to their ageless modernity and the project thus has considered the development of images in their meanings in different contexts according to the historical period in which they are realized. The third part is about Vatican palimpsest, digital recovery of erased identities. The Vatican Library has identified more than 380 manuscripts in its own collections, which include palimpsests, 
erased and then recycled parchment folios. This pathway intends to present this rich and scarcely explored material to the public by making an in-depth archeological research on the palimpsest of the 24 selected select manuscripts and recover their lost identities with the help of the triple IF technologies. Making accessible, hardly legible images to the public is a challenging task because the actual method of publication has been designed to typical objects. Thus, publishing online atypical objects require creative solutions and improvements of the actual routine. By the pathway, digital reconstruction makes four palimpsests accessible both by their upper and lower scripts, a condition with which the actual conservation of these manuscripts and the normal method of publication do not allow. These manuscripts include, for example, the only surviving text of Cicero's Republic from the fourth, five, fifth century, and the earliest but so far neglected manuscript, ninth century, of Philo of Alexandria, who combined Greek and Jewish philosophies in Augustus' time. The lost identities of the selected manuscripts cover the history of Latin and Greek scripts from the 4th fifth century and embrace a wide range of cultural contexts before the 12th century, mostly of the Byzantine world, and shed light on the history of the textual scholarship with them. Erased texts are often very old and significant witnesses of a lost past, but they are difficult to access for the naked eye. They need an expert interpreter and highly special photographic and post-processing technologies, and especially the flexibility of presentation offered by the IIIF APIs, which can turn erase text more accessible online than in their physical existence. By doing so, the Pathways creates an innovative method of presenting policies of the Vatican Library compared to the actual routine of digital presentation of Vatican manuscripts and to the online presentation of the palimpsest elsewhere. And then the last past is about another, completely another different period because it's about the humanistic prince's library, Federico da Montefeltro and his manuscript. The library of Federico da Montefeltro, Duke of Urbino, since 1474, is known as a typical humanist collection, modeled in respect of the standard developed by Tommaso Parentucelli later Pope taking on the name of Nicholas V, but open to the contemporary world. While representative sectors include the scripture, patristics, theology, classics, contemporary technical and scientific works, and contemporary literature. The most common language is Latin, but Greek and Hebrew are also represented. The collection was outstanding, not only for its substance, the amount of volumes, as well as the quality in relation with other libraries of that age, but for the value of each manuscript partially acquired from antique market, many commissioned by Federico and realized by refined copyists and greater artists of that time. The manuscripts were produced in two main locations, Florence and Urbino. In the first years, Federico preferred to buy or order manuscripts in Florence, both in writing and illumination. Later, he preferred Ferrara or Padon artists and scribes active in Urbino. This pathway points out the characteristic of the two schools, very different in style, and most important artists, half of the chosen manuscripts is representative of the Florentine schools, 
while the other half of Ferrara and Padua schools. So as you can see here, an example, for example, of the Mirador viewer uh, um, offering not only, for example, the, the image of the bindings, but also emphasizing the importance of the provenances of uh, this volume by the way of uh, adding an annotation uh, pertaining to the spine label because uh, it is saying in Italian about uh, the older index. So the older shelf mark pertaining to the, this book, uh, which is of course uh, of great interest for reconstructing the provenance. So let me focus again on Mirador. This is an example in, in any way of Mirador. Mirador development for this project has contributed to and benefited and benefited from this community development effort. As I said um, um, uh, before, uh, Mirador is an open source, so it's an open community. And uh, uh, thanks to this project, the community has uh, uh, enlarged the vision of Mirador because uh, the tool we have uh, um, implemented in this project uh, were offered directly to the other libraries. So to the other uh, individuals uh, of this community. So throughout the course of this project, the Stanford technical team, as, as I said, uh, this project was uh, um, uh, with uh, Stanford, uh, uh, was uh, shared with Stanford the University Library. And Stanford technical team has actively engaged in Mirador's community-based development process, which concluded the extensive use of an open code repository in GitHub, an open email list in Google Groups, bi-weekly teleconferences, and typical quarterly face-to-face -face meetings of core developers to coordinate architectural feature and releases. This has ensured development work of the Vatican Library dotates with and does not duplicate or compete with enhancement plan by other parties and that feature for the library has been integrated into the core code base as correspondingly maintained by the community extensively and important sustainability strategy. For the password of the thematic pathways, Project Mirador's functionality has been enhanced to support better scholarly markup. Desired feature of creating and editing annotations during the scholarly analysis of the project manuscripts have been grouped into extensions of annotation creation capabilities and extension of a user's ability to work effectively with the body of annotations once they have been created. For the extension of annotation creation capability, specific areas of development have included the ability to create right to left, left to right, vertical and multi-directional annotations in order to respond to various linguistic and layout needs in the corpus of manuscript to be analyzed. Support of, for left to right, right to left and vertical navigation of manuscript materials in the viewing windows of Mirador. A stable platform for the creation of annotation on complex region of interest a stable platform for the editing and the deleting of existing annotation, the ability to credit an author or group of authors for each annotation, ability to provide layout formats within the book of an within the body of the annotation to support footnotes and bibliographic citations, support for all unicode characters in the body of the annotation. The described and annotated manuscripts presented in Mirador within each of the thematic pathways are 
published online as an exhibit in the spotlight that is an open source software that enables librarians, curators, and other content experts to easily build feature-rich websites that showcase collections and objects from a digital repository, uploaded items, or combination of the two. A spotlight exhibit can be created by librarians, curator, activists, and other who are not be uh, web developers. Spotlights can interoperate directly with a digital repository, enabling seamless population of the exhibit with digital objects and their metadata, as you can see here, an example of an item page. Above all, it can contain embedded Mirador and instances that give a user access to Mirador to a rich body of IIIF rich annotations. So this is a list of annotations, annotations made available by the way of the Mirador. In this project, we have created over 26,000 annotations in Mirador. Annotations are also classified using tags for the, for the classification of topics and the identification of personal names. I mean, scribes, illuminators, and so on, and places, for example, for the provenances. Tags are available as authority lists in Mirador for each thematic pathway and then index and searchable in Spotlight. We have identified over 900 tags pertaining to topics, while names, personal and geographic names are established according to the authority files of the Vatican Library. In some case, we have also identified hierarchical relations of tags such as themes related to illuminations to display as a racket or phases. Tags are available in English translation, being part of facets and indexes in Spotlight. Finally, regarding to the Mirador, I would like to mention the last implementation work of the Mirador community. I refer to the implementation of uh, a new version of Mirador, the Mirador 3. Mirador uh, 3 has, a, has a, a highly configurable, flexible, and next generation version of interactive IIIF image viewer capable to enhance full text annotation, annotation attributes such as tag, author, motivation, etc story-oriented annotation in which annotation drive the navigation within and across canvases related to digital objects to be read right to left as well as left to right and multi-scripts metadata. So the ongoing developments shows that the revolution of IIIF is not yet over and the new challenges for the growing triple F community are still ongoing. As you can see here, we have so far billions of digital objects in the website. But uh, I think we can stop here in order to uh, uh, double check if uh, we have uh, some questions for you. As I know, this is a seminars and open seminars. It's not uh, only for listen to uh, the presenter, but also uh, Q and A discussions that we can have uh, about what uh, I uh, I hope uh, I was able to represent. Uh, to this uh, very important audience of this group. So I would like to stop and in case I, I may add other uh, key concept about the IIIF, but at first let me know if you need more explanations about the concept that I have uh, uh, mentioned so far, curiosity and so on.
I know this is a very uh, new technology, so I can uh, figure out uh, how difficult it is uh, to realize uh, all these. Uh, and so I strongly suggest you also to, after this meeting, after this seminar, to visit our website and our thematic pathways uh, platform. Right. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, <laughs> because as soon as you just thank you so much for this uh, presentation, actually, it was really interesting because um, to better understand how Mirador works and how this project in which you are involved in, and you just actually uh, explain Oh, okay, <laughs> there's no differentiation anymore. Perfect. Uh, so how it works, especially because for us as Slavic paleography and philology in general, it's uh, good to steal some of these ideas and to see how uh, they work, how they are like uh, constructive somehow. And uh, I mean, I don't want to say to steal, but it's maybe it's better to say that uh, this kind of models, this kind of methodologies can be used even for uh, Slavic, uh, like South Slavic in this case, or the, in the case of our project, uh, manuscripts and like the visualization in general. And uh, I mean, maybe we have some work to do according to visualization and stuff, but still, uh, it's interesting to know that this kind of project exists and how they work. So it will be um, amazing. And, and that's why I wanted to tell you all that this uh, seminar is recorded and it's on Facebook and it will be even on YouTube. So if you need like further explanation, if you want to see again uh, all the, because it's a lot of content, you know, <laughs> and there are a lot of links. So it's better to catch them. You can just stop the video on YouTube and you just like have to go on Facebook and everything will be there actually. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna stop talking. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna like wait for someone to have a few questions, and I will check even on Facebook because sometimes we have comments on Facebook in which they ask something like this. So let's start with the questions. If there's someone. Just for breaking the ice. I would like also to uh, comment on what uh, um, uh, you uh, mentioned about. Uh, is this uh, a technology of interest for the Slavic studies, for the paleographic Slavic studies? The answer is, uh, of course, yes, particularly because uh, um, 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 studying and uh, so working, uh, um, for example, um, um, within uh, uh, for the purpose of a transcription using uh, the mirador, so you can transcribe directly uh, on to the image, and uh, you can uh, use uh, as much as the scripts uh, uh, you need. So this is very important because uh, as uh, I I try to explain. Um, you can tra tra transcribe by using uh, Unicode characters, uh, which uh, may uh, uh, makes you uh, available to uh, enter uh, your uh, transcriptions in uh, Cyrillic or in other scripts as well, or and also the composition between different scripts together. Particularly, what is also uh, important uh, in transcriptions or in a general con con context in, annot in annotating uh, images uh, is that you can annotate also in spite of the region you are annotating. For example, I want to transcribe, so I start with a, 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 tra a, a transcription line by line. Then I want to emphasize a concept, a word, in which uh, uh, there is the line already transcribed. So you can just like a pencil, because the, the great idea is to offer to a scholar uh, the possibility of uh, studying uh, just like uh, you used to do uh, uh, with your uh, uh, notes. With paper. You have yeah. a pencil with a paper. And what you used to do, not 
on a manuscript. You used to do exactly this. You want to emphasize, so I underline, I made a circle, I made a, a square, then I put an arrow and I write an annotation. So compare to, uh, this is of interest for the purpose of blah, 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 blah. So the idea is treating a digital image for the purpose of your annotations. What the matter with this? You can transcribe in the say in a line as we are saying, and then you can open, for example, a circle by the Mirador tool, able to give you the possibility of using the circle. I want to have put a word in a circle and express something. Then I want to classify because I want to. For, for the purpose of uh, a retrieval of uh, keywords, uh, I want to, to classify these annotation um, uh, in both the possibility, either having uh, all the words uh, composing the annotations uh, as uh, a full text to be searched, or mm -hmm. uh, um, by a classification, for example, I want to classify my annotation by using, for example, uh, provenances of also um, Sofia, uh, Rome, for because the provenances of this uh, manuscript is coming up for Byzantine uh, history or uh, 9th century or 10th century, and so on. In order to have later, a list of just like a subject headings list for retrieving the different contents you want to collect, for example. And also you can add if you are if your purpose is a curatorial purpose within a library, because it's different purpose from the point of view of a scholar. Uh, we can also link to the D tool, to these images, all the catalogs, I mean, all the descriptive metadata, uh, the, what it was the, at first, the printed catalogs, uh, then we have uh, all these uh, in, uh, in, uh, in online public catalogs. Uh, so uh, thanks to the IIIF, you can link, uh, but the, Data pertaining to the script, the description of the of a manuscript to another kind of uh, um, information, which is the annotation. So I think you are all scholars. You, I think you often you always study in libraries in the world, and what you have at your disposal. You have many catalogs, many uh, references, so many books, many inventories, and then you have images. Imagine that in this technique, you can have all these linked. This is the idea. And you do not never have annot annotations, so the the more insight uh, uh, part of the content, because uh, the catalogs can have, of course, notes pertaining to, for example, saying that a glossa is, uh, was added from uh, someone, or uh, a caption within any, within any illuminations uh, and so on. But uh, you, you, you cannot uh, uh, de display, you cannot vis visualize immediately this uh, on an image. <laughs> so the idea, I, I love it, this idea. Uh, I tell you why, because uh, it is a, a very simple idea. The idea is uh, to offer a, a user a, a experience very close to the paper. And so in that way, returning to the paper, even in spite of uh, 
the use of the IT technology, which is of the utmost importance for us because, uh, of course, uh, uh, the improving of uh, research in the digital humanities uh, is uh, thanks to two technologies because, uh, again, we, if we want to query a catalog or another kind of platform by by um, uh, in uh, by adding your keyword, uh, you can at a glance having uh, thousands of uh, of uh, um, uh, information of records uh, pertaining to your request, which is very different from the time consuming uh, reading. Uh, a printed catalog. And so, uh, ser searching uh, uh, on um, contents in, uh, let me say in quotes, in an analogic mode <laughs> versus a digital mode. So, your questions in case. Uh, so, I have two technical questions. Uh, the first, uh, if I understand, uh, you can use uh, the um, annotation, the whatever, only with the image, only uh, with the photograph, uh, which is in this project uh, uh, 3IF, triple IF. We, you, you can't uh, 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 annotate uh, a an image uh, 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 of one uh, libraries uh, which isn't uh, uh, in this project. So, and, uh, and, uh, and okay. the second okay. question, uh, uh, when you use, because you can annotate, you can confrontate, uh, 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 compare uh, uh, image uh, 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 um, when you uh, um, um, annotate the image is physically in the site of bibliotech or library you 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 uh, um, in, the, there is important for the right uh, no no uh, let me uh, at first th thank you for these two very uh, important uh, questions uh, because they give me the um, opportunity to explain more about this. Uh, regarding the first one uh, of yes, I mean that uh, at the beginning of the digitization projects worldwide, the idea was uh, uh, starting with uh, a, a siloed project, I mean uh, project locked. I mean that the viewer, uh, the adopted viewer, were something coming from a technology pertaining to a specific software, which is uh, the uh, problem, the issue with this approach. The, uh, and why the idea of triple IF uh, approach has fascinating uh, the major parts of the library's uh, holdings, um, holding uh, uh, manuscripts and antique materials. The first approach was very tricky because once you need to upgrade or change system, if the viewer is a not open source viewer, you have to remain with a vendor and you cannot offer to your library a real maintenance, I mean, the guarantee that what you have already done will be uh, uh, valid over the time. So it was also uh, a concern 
that I think uh, my colleague has expressed for the three, for the um, FITS format, uh, I mean the, the format for preserving uh, the high resolution images. If you do not use uh, open source uh, uh, technologies, uh, your project is uh, at risk. So this is a lesson learned, for example, that uh, Gallica in France uh, or the first great, great uh, um, uh, digital uh, libraries has well understood. So nowadays, uh, Gallica in France, uh, the library, the digital library, such as the British Library, the Vatican Library, the, the, the Bodleian libraries, Yale, and uh, the Italian libraries. Uh, so the major libraries within the world has now understood the benefit of, uh, open, of an open source approach. So not the idea of having a silo, a silo of images as well as uh, data locked by a software. And this is also, let me focus just for a while, this is also related to the web semantic approach. The approach uh, in the semantic web is uh, about uh, linking data for the purpose of the reusing. So the magic key, he, the magic word here is reusing. The reuse is able if and only if you are using open source techniques. So, and but you are right because when you say you can uh, use uh, all these capabilities such as comparing different images or annotating contents of images, is it starting from images AAAF compliant? So I say yes, but this is not a concern because the world, in particular, the world of manuscripts is becoming a world compliant to a shared interoperable protocol, which is the IIIF, because it is not imposed by anyone. All these uh, uh, um, uh, institutions are sharing the, these uh, kind of standards. So you can, we can say that within the consortium of the IIIF, there are all the libraries adopting this technology. And the Vatican Library is one of the early adopters. So uh, in particular, with this uh, um, project uh, on, uh, pertaining to the thematic pathways, we are, let me say, leading a little bit uh, the, um, the, the use cases of the, uh, pertaining to the annotation, of course, uh, thanks to a very important uh, uh, technological partner, such as the Stanford University. As for the second uh, um, question, it is also, I am so grateful to you for also for this question because you are saying if there is a limitation, so can you annotate or compare something that is coming from your own library? The answer is not. Why? Because when I say, when uh, we say reusing, it is uh, without any uh, uh, concern for the property, for the copyright, for the property of images. Why? Because you are not uh, using uh, the images. You are just connecting them with them. For example, if uh, one day we will have another seminar, a more uh, focusing seminar pertaining to how we can annotate. So there are editors, such as uh, a text editor. There are IIIF editors 
giving you the opportunity, the capability of recalling such as a link, recalling, so asking for uh, viewing into your editor, uh, for example, a Vatican manuscript, recalling another witness because you are doing a critical edition. You are philologist, perhaps, or you are a um, uh, paleographer. Let, let's say, because it's an easy example, you are doing a critical edition. So you have to um, uh, focus on a stemma codicum, for example. And then you have to study, at the same time, different witnesses. But uh, um, due to the course of the event, these, these witnesses are one at the Vatican Library, another one at the British Library, and another one at the Bibliothèque Nationale de France, or uh, in Japan. Also in Japan, we have triple health institutions, such as the Diet Library, really in the world. So in that case, what you can do, you can sit, uh, uh, in front of your laptop, you open your uh, editor, people have a editor, you take the URL of each of these witness and you put, uh, and then you, you commit, you enter, you put, and then the, your editor is able to recollect the three, the four, manuscripts coming from different repositories. Then you can do what do you prefer? You can just delete images. <gasps> My goodness, are you deleting with, uh, images from uh, these libraries? <laughs> no, not at all. You are just excluding the URLs pertaining to the same the, the individual folios from to your critical edition because uh, your text is about the three recto in the witness uh, number one, the four verso in the witness number two, and the ten verso in the witness number three. Then you click for the deletion of all the other folios, and then you will have on your laptop the three folios. What you can do with this? You can annotate, you can uh, uh, transcribe, uh, you can just uh, add the captions, you can uh, add the descriptive metadata, which is not annotation, because an annotation is something you want to emphasize within a folio or something you want describe, uh, transcribe, sorry, and then you save. Question, is the Vatican Library or the, or the National French Library as well as the British Library will get your annotation? The answer is no. So this is your own critical edition made thanks to the IIIF technique or we can have a, 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 an open project, imagine in the future, a kind of a crowdsourcing project in which we will open to, in terms of a server and not in terms of your own laptop, in which we will allow, it is, it's a little tricky because uh, annotation has to be moderate, we will allow end users to add annotations in, in in principle, it is possible. I hope I can clarify these two very important questions. Thanks for this. Thank you very much. Actually, just to add like a little thing, Transcribus is using in this kind of uh, AAAF links. And like right now I'm using the, the, exactly. the software just because of uh, the winter school that we are doing. And what we have to, like what we asked 
uh, we asked to do is to take the link from there. And then we, with our own account, we can create this uh, like a notation transcription actually of the, of the, of the text of the Latin text. <laughs> and, but what we've done it was using like just one link and everyone from our group, but it is like the late medieval group of the, of the of work, everyone is working on the same. So you can see like different annotation, but just with like one link that is the, uh, like the triple AF that we took and then everyone is working. So you have like different kind of work that you can do on, but thanks to the link. So we use Gallica, so we use the uh, <laughs> Vatican Library too. So we use like different resources. And for our winter school and for our screen boost is amazing because you can take a lot of manuscripts, not just what you have, but it's, uh, it's interesting, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, I, I, I totally agree with, uh, with you. And thanks for uh, recalling also the trans, the trans people's project, uh, which is a, a, a very exciting project. The fundraising, it, it is, uh, of course, uh, uh, compliance to IIIF images, uh, but in itself, uh, it, it, it gives uh, um, an institution to buy, as you know, credits uh, <laughs> in terms of the trans, the trans previous jargon mm. for uh, the transcription for uh, for um, um, try to the interpretation by the machine learning of the transcribus, uh, which is uh, an artificial intelligence uh, um, application. So. Uh, there is a link between the two techniques, uh, not for the automatic uh, um, um, uh, transcriptions, but for the for uh, referring uh, the, the linking transcription, mm -hmm. the linking the transcription to the to the lines uh, within a folio. Uh, in doing this. Uh, by um, uh, transforming uh, your text, uh, transcribed text, uh, as annotation, uh, which are available in the IIIF uh, APIs, uh, IIIF presentation API. This, this is a little technique, but the purpose is uh, how we can uh, um, uh, unify the two concept uh, by the way of the AAAF manifest, uh, which is uh, a, a available in the web semantic in which you can get all the information you can get starting from a transcribus. A transcribus, uh, let's say it, it, it it's uh, 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 becoming, uh, it's a good uh, um, tool that has to uh, be used before. So you start with an image, then you, tra you tra transcribe a manual, of, of course, a triple AI compliant, you transcribe, and then you get all the link in order to, to link the contents to the triple AF presentation API. You are so excellent, so so skilled. You are referring also to the transcribus. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, excuse me. But uh, if uh, uh, you need one manuscript, uh, who is in one libraries which don't use triple if, uh, you you can't. Uh, uh, use uh, uh, this technique because, okay. for example, I think uh, in, in Russian uh, there isn't, uh, 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 but we have many manuscripts in Russian, of course. So you can use the transcribus, but then you can just offer the benefit of the transcription in your locked world. So let me say this in terms of uh, an IT purpose, not, on, not in the other purposes. I mean locked because uh, a software, an image not, uh, not um, interoperable 
we can consider it as an as a loft image. Okay, so you can transcribe, of course. You can also uh, try to use uh, an HOCR, an optical recognition, for example, for uh, modern uh, calligraphies, uh, for printed uh, text, and so on. But in the end, uh, you cannot uh, share. That's the idea. If you want to share, if you want to have uh, a, let me say, an open-mindedness approach to the digital uh, uh, heritage, you need to have interoperable images. So, of course, you can have pretty images, high-resolution images, but with no guarantee for sharing this, uh, this knowledge. So, if the purpose is we want to share and we want to benefit to the knowledge of the others, and we want to share our, know our knowledge, we need to do something in terms of being interoperable. And to be involved in it is not, this is very important, is not in a passive mode, because it is not correct. <laughs> so it means also, uh, in uh, participating in an active uh, um, um, in an active uh, uh, conduction of, uh, uh, for example, the evolution of the standards. Just for giving you another example, an idea. The last uh, uh, the last uh, uh, implementation, uh, uh, the last uh, objective goal in in the triple IF world is about the 3D approach, studying the 3D in as an, an interoperable model, as well as adding bookmarks in, in the IIIF. Why bookmarks? Bookmarks has a digital bookmark, as you know, because you are all scholars wonderful scholars. So you used to uh, write your articles, your, your papers by adding notes in which you add a reference. For example, you add a reference pertaining to a manuscript within uh, a certain library. So you cite or a study and or you cite a material. You cite um, the Vaticano Latino number 39, and so on. Now, people uh, used to cite the URI, the URL. I mean, URI because uh, these are permalinks, of course, permalinks. Otherwise, uh, your references will be, uh, we, we will die again if you used to lock everything, and if you change server change system, also the links that will be changed. In that way, they are permalink. So the idea is that not only to reference by the way of the link pertaining to the manuscript as a whole, so the entire volume, but also the idea of linking contents you want to add. So I would like to, uh, to refer to uh, an annotation that Marta in a library has, has added. And I want to link directly the contents that are or a certain illumination or a certain glossa within a leaf. So this is uh, the last uh, idea. And it is uh, uh, important for our common studies because uh, and it is not so obvious uh, it, uh, that the IIIF was born at first for the purpose of studying manuscripts in the world. And I love this idea. For the first time, a technique is considering the humanistic studies and in particular, the ancient ones. So we agree. I think we agree. We all agree. <laughs> yeah, of course we agree, Marco. So we have to convince all the <laughs> all the libraries. 
here in Belgrade and everywhere actually to, to use these triple ayats so that we can uh, start to do this work too, because uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, right now we just, we don't have this. <laughs> we don't have this um, kind of system like this kind of method. But, but it's interesting to know that that's why I was talking about the stealing ideas, you know, because now that we know, I mean, now in general we know, but now with this seminar, of course, we deepen all this content and it, it will be like really interesting. It actually, this is what, like, this is the direction of our project, like to share, to, to create this kind of shared, uh, like environment. And for example, we have this database that we just we're finishing to create this database of all the manuscript, the, the 14th centuries of the Slavic uh, manuscript, because it's useful to have like just one place in which you can search for, you know, and share with catalogs and stuff. So like not just with uh, the physical uh, book or catalog of manual, but just like online. And what we are trying to, to do is to connect uh, images, of course, of the manuscript, not just the content, uh, the description, everything, but just even the image of it. And uh, yeah, with this triple away app, I think that would be like really interesting. It would be useful. <laughs> but this is not the utmost importance, Marta, because uh, thanks to this, uh, you can co consider it in a twofold uh, uh, role. For the purpose of what you can do and plan right now, so which is a very uh, important value, so it is an excellent approach for the purpose you are uh, considering right, uh, right now, as well as a base, a wonderful base for enhancing uh, um, your, uh, your uh, implementation in terms of a AAA compliance. So nothing is lost. <laughs> so it is a great idea. So it is uh, good to know that you have done all this and it is very important to inform you about other techniques, particularly uh, for the benefit of an open source approach. Yeah. Okay, so I think uh, it is about uh, to close. Uh, sorry for this. Uh, we have just three minutes. Uh, and uh, but uh, uh, in these three minutes, uh, I just wanted to uh, to use just one for thanks again and also for uh, um, uh, uh, inviting again you, the three that Marco mentioned to visit us, why not? Uh, I think that also the other colleagues of the Vatican Library will be uh, definitely uh, happy to welcome you and to discuss with, with you about the common interests. Thank you, thank you so much. But oh, Marco, you have, we have two minutes. <laughs> yes, thank you very much for I think for us is very in interesting uh, uh, seminar. Um, you need we need uh, now think about that. Uh, and uh, uh, um, thank you very much for invitation. Uh, I, I I think uh, that we we uh, provide we 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 will. Uh, E искам да благодаря пак Паула Манони, да затварям, тя сега трябва да, да тръгне, защото затварят Ватиканската библиотека в, 6 часа, в 7 часа българското време затварят и тя не може да се остане вътре цяла нощта. Те, че благодарим много и ще ви информираме за следващите семинари чрез нашите обикновени канали. Thank you.